want to find out how this half of the month is padding out for your zodiac sign and how to get the best out of it, come and join Yoga's Readings 5 Day and we'll have a look. A very warm welcome to Yildiz Readings 5D. For those of you that don't know, I'm a psychic medium. I cover astrology, soul coaching, twin flame path and more. I am live weekly, so please click the bell and subscribe. And if you do want more creative content like this, come and join the tribe. Additionally, we have the member zone. So if you do want the creative content early and have a coaching room, we do have the join button. For all booking information, the link is directly below. Without further ado, let's get into the update for your zodiac sign for your bi-monthly report. For all the dates, retrogrades and aspects occurring as well as the great days and the difficult days, I have created a report after this update for your zodiac sign and it is incorporated inside. You can stream forward now or let's jump into your update. Hi beautiful Aquarius, we're here to do your update for your bi-monthly report. The moon energy is incorporated inside this video. You can scroll forward and scroll back and it is titled for your romance, career, your health, your emotions, your family and more. And the update relating to the aspects is at the end of the video. So please stay tuned. Let's have a look first at your romance sector. Now this is for couples, singles and those of you on the fence. So astrologically we'll discuss those things more towards the end. But we're going to talk about how this can be shaping up for your zodiac sign. Now, spiritually, you can you can be feeling at the moment, where is my energy in these circumstances? How do you resonate with these things, these connections? Very separately, because we are having um, a lot of things psychologically come up for your zodiac sign, you do have Pluto retrograding in your 12th house, which does mean this could be a little bit of an emotional time, but I feel you guys are going to handle this well. The reason I'm saying that is because we don't have Saturn, Jupiter and Aquarius in that house. So you can be looking at things and experiencing things very differently on this occasion. That is one thing to note inside of relationships. I do feel you will personally be, due to the fact that we have Junus retrograde and Sagittarius, be looking at your relationship sector with a magnifying glass. Does this resonate? Do our values mix? Um, where were my connections in the past? How do you spiritually feel um, now? And you can see it's a, it will feel a little bit like a Venus retrograde, but you'll be relating to it differently. I feel a lot of you, um, you know, will be looking at you having to be strong inside of connections, but you actually requiring strong individuals also. But because Juno is retrograde in Sagittarius, the biggest things that can be shaping is do you resonate with the people that you're surrounding? Does it feel like a tribe to you? Does it feel um, that you are merging in with that? And there might have been a point where you did feel yes. Uh, your ideals, your social lives, they may be clashing at this point and they can come up for question. I do feel you guys will be heavily assessing it with a fine tooth comb. Spiritually as well, uh, there are a lot of shifts when it does come to what you're willing to put into things. And, uh, you know, through, through your spiritual sense, I feel you're uncovering things, but you feel that you things are being hidden from you. Now, this is also a time where many of you will have communication, be it your coupled or single, with people from the past. So this can be a very interesting time emotionally, and I intuitively feel some of you can be feeling that you know what you want out of a connection and maybe the things aren't matching. So this can be fine tuning. It can be a time of renegotiation. The testing point can really come through with your health and your healthy boundaries. And it might be due to your values. We're going to be having Mars transiting cancer and it does hit your sixth house. So healthy boundaries. Um, again, I'm seeing your values being deeply important and you're looking at the direct foundation and your stability as the most um, of paramount. And definitely from a spiritual point of view, what you're letting go of is the belief that everything does have to come to an ending. 
shedding cycles and shedding skin and having disagreements doesn't mean to say things have to come to an end. And really the resonance inside of our connections is do we resonate with those human beings at this point? And each of us individually will be doing that. But this is potentially the way it can be playing out for you. If you are in a connection that is heavy and toxic, it can directly be affecting your health and well-being. And I do feel um, you may be, maybe we're going to be cautious because values can be coming up big time in the next three months. But this is your bi-monthly report. So emotionally, to do with quite creativity and values, they're going to come up for triggers. Be it you're communicating with the individual, you're tuning into it, or they're physically in front of you. I do feel some very solid kind of steps are going to be taken, but I feel between now and June is a huge pivotal time for your zodiac sign, and I really feel most of you are going to make major decisions relating to this area. Um, but it's the, the right energies are going to be balanced out. That's what I will say. I do feel spiritually, psychologically, you may be speaking your mind and stating your case about how you feel to do with things, but this can be a beautiful rebirth for you at this point. And definitely in different areas, you have fantastic elements as well. It can be a little bit testing because you guys do have a sudden return at the moment. So if by the time we do have, let's have a look at the dates. We're having um, Saturn retrograde May 23rd. You will potentially feel it in the first two weeks. I'll just be honest. This can feel very personal initially. You may feel a little bit ratty. We may be a bit, um, you know, for those of us that have family and children, there could be things to do with our pets coming up at the moment. So, you know, in your love life and however you're directly relating to it, these are how these things can be playing out. So if you can come to the table in awareness that people can be triggered, our emotions can be a bit sensitive, it is a perfect time to get fit. And I see a lot of you guys shifting that up and creating healthy boundaries and pouring energy into um, your, your hobbies, your goals, your fitness, um, things that resonate with you, people that resonate with you. That is your support system at this point. Now, some of you do have the potential to fall pregnant at this time. So pre one for armed, make sure you take the precautions if that's something that really, you know, you're not really ready for. Not that life happens that way, but there can be circumstances surrounding that. I do feel you'll be more assertive and speaking your mind, but you also can be looking at how you can change things up. Overall, I do see a lot of you communicating, speaking your truth, and definitely communication from people from the past coming up. Some of you could be sort of on the fence and really be thinking about where do you go from here. So, you know, really balance yourself out, get your energy anchored in. Um, understand this, uh, it can feel very personal through the transformation, but the best is yet to come. This can be a perfect time to actually unhash these circumstances, as long as we are doing them in a healthy format. And yes, it's not wrong during a Mercury retrograde, which we will be having, um, to connect with individuals. It's probably not the best time at this point with Juno retrograde and Sagittarius to develop a brand new connection. It's more we're integrating through this retrograde process of what everything in the past meant and how to implement the changes moving forward. But it doesn't mean you can't. Just move into it more gently if you do meet someone and be open to these perspectives of assessing values. Now we also separately are going to be having romance updates psychically. So stay tuned if you're brand new, a very warm welcome. Click the bell and you can get those updates and we will be having extensions. Okay, now we're going to be having a look at your career sector. As I mentioned, you can stream forward to different areas that you feel are relevant. Otherwise you can book a reading, but we do have these bi-monthly. So your career sector is set to be super unique and you may find at a spiritual level, some of these things you, you might find inside the element of work, you can be fine tuning. 
Now, if you've been working in one particular area for a very long time, you can find this can be a culminating time to level up, to come correct. It can be chase, changing your dress sense, looking at habits and routines and fine tuning them. And by really being very um, strict with yourself, you'll find you'll get the best out of it, but don't overburden yourself. So if you're um, adding too much on your plate, it can come up in a pain body experience and it can create stress. So it's gonna be important to be in your self-awareness when it does come to these areas. Feminine energies also, and people that are highly susceptible to stress can be a little bit more irate during this transit. And it is gonna be there for the next uh, two months. So we get, uh, we're gonna have um, Mars and Cancer transit out of there into the house of Leo uh, June 11th. So we've, we've got from here to there with that. So you will find that people can be more agitated. Try to not take it personal. Some of you could be looking at, if you're working at home, how to get that strict routine there. Many people are changing their routines up, changing their home environment, especially with all the tourist placements. And this can be a place where you could either be upskilling, educating, or running home businesses. Uh, definitely from a developmental point of view, this, full, this new moon in Taurus um, can be a time of moving home. It also can be a time of directly working from home and doing things and having the shift and change. I do feel with the career sector, um, if you've been dealing with contracts, things that were hidden, being unsure about what you're going to do or what the environment's going to be, there can be a mood changes directly resonating with does this job resonate with me there can be a total shift in career field and there also can be things surrounding career that are going to be shown to you and that can even be if you've been really pouring work into it and you're going to start seeing the rewards of it but it's completing those things ending one cycle starting a brand new one over the next six to twelve months have a look at what happened last month. Some of that energy from the full moon in Scorpio was very Pluto in nature. So even in your career sector, be it you're working or be it you're looking for a job or studying and moving towards it, the career sector point blank zero. For your zodiac sign, you're going to be picking something that has um, the ability to stand the test of time. Also, I'm feeling you guys are wanting your privacy intact. Um, and I don't know why that's relevant, but it's coming through. It feels like you want your privacy intact. I do feel you're becoming a little bit more private about what your likes and dislikes are. And you may find psychologically a problem that you're dealing with. You may be able to resolve it through your analytical mind. Now, the big changes can be through if you are working in a particular industry, feel free to book a reading. This is very much collective energy. You may find through your networking, it can really benefit things, especially come mid-month to the end of the month when we have the eclipse in Sagittarius. This can be a great time to advertise, a great time to change those energies up. But also paradigms to do with your values and beliefs can, can be coming up for a shake up. So your pastimes, your hobbies, your friendship groups, but very much inside the element of career, you can find this can be a great time to um, really shine bright like a diamond, but you need to be uh, really honing in that energy in that domain. Be very cautious about your communication with individuals this month because it can come off a bit confusing. But definitely our values and the steps we're taking can be majorly um, aspected in self-worth, values, belief systems. So just bear that in mind when you're dealing with it. But I do see benefits happening there and this can even be mass winds of cash coming through. Now, the one thing I can say inside your career is luck is on your side. If you've been pouring energy into a circumstance, want to put the resumes out, fantastic time to do such. Winnings and um, brand new positions can come up because we have Jupiter in the house of Pisces. Separately, this can be a time that if you're seeing the writing on the wall, take the steps to assess it because we have 2022, Jupiter will be moving into the house of Pisces. So this is a bird's eye view into how your life can change. Make it work for you. 
Okay, Aquarius, we did say we were going to talk about cash and windfalls. Do be super careful about the things you're spending your money on. This can be a really great time to fine tune the cash component, both from the Taurus placements, from the things that you value, uh, you may be beautifying. And when we talk about money, we're going to talk about two polarities here, that of what we spent and that of what we are gaining. So that of what we spend, we're more inclined to, within your zodiac sign, want quality. And some of those expenses may be going towards the area of both your health, your well-being, your career sector, and also the things you are using to step up a level. So this can be technology, computers. Really, if you're doing anything to that degree, you're better off to do that in the first two weeks. Um you also need to be wary, uh, we'll mention the health section and do stay tuned for that because there's important aspects I need to mention for you guys. The one thing I would say is the expenses do that towards the first half of the month and that's more with the technology aspect of things due to the fact that we're going to have Mercury retrograde in Gemini. So keep your receipts, it's not stop your life and don't do such. Communication even inside of work can be a little bit testing due to the mercury retrograde but that will be incorporated in the secondary report. It still can come through towards the second week of May. Money as well in the growth. The, the way you can fine tune it, some of you may be saving for a trip. Some of you also may need to take a trip at a drop of a hat and this may be due to employment. But this can be major plans that you're trying to um, forge. And even when it comes to advertising and media, you can be looking at the bigger picture, fine tuning things and changing them about. Some of you can be changing your friendship groups. And if stresses arise, pay attention to your communication, your actions and your words. And, you know, holding on to those things in the past, they're going to sabotage you. So don't, don't give it permission. If it comes up, come through to our live sessions, come through for the coaching. Um, otherwise, talk to somebody that you really trust. Friendship groups, if they are moving away, it's because you're evolving and changing. And some of those things do stand the test of time and some of those people do come back. And especially now, many of you in your social endeavors will return to old hobbies. Some of you can be changing them up and resonating more at a different level and you may be gaining, um, spending money on those areas. So pay attention this month to, it's a good, I would say it's a good month to do the books. Check the books have a place where you can get grounded and be mindful of where you're giving your energy to. Spend you as a cash component well. Okay, I'm feeling tired. What am I going to do? I'm going to go and do something nurturing. Um, yeah, and we, we can't always do those things, but where we can, we need to honor such. Now, very separately, I can't give you financial advice, but I can say astrologically how these things can play out. It can be lucky numbers time, and that's due to the fact that we have the 11th house in Sagittarius and the second house in Pisces. Jupiter is going to be in the house of Pisces, so this can be an extremely lucrative month for you. So the luck is on your side, Aquarius. Use it. Okay, let's talk about the area of family. Now, these can be your children, it can be your siblings. Um, there can be lots coming up this month, and it is due to the fact that both A, we have Juno in Sagittarius. There can be things happening in our siblings' lives when it comes to their connections. We can also have values coming up that are hugely differing or we're holding very firm to when returning to our roots. With Mars and Cancer, themes to do with feminines, um, childbirth, parenting, our emotions, hidden wounds can come up and we can be feeling like we want to liberate ourselves. Now we have just moved out of last month's energy with the full moon in Scorpio. With that, it will still be traveling through to this month. It's still going to be the resonance of it, even though we have the moon transiting various moon signs till it gets to the new in the full. With the element of Scorpio for your zodiac sign, we did have the full moon in Scorpio. It's very underrealm and energy. A lot of you can be thinking about your loved ones that have passed over. Also about what stability is, what you can do to help the direct environment. And with Mars in your sixth house, you could be concerned about the well-being. 
You can be concerned about a feminine energy for some of you. And I do feel it's important to, A, if we have wounds relating to our childhood, you can do the inner child healing. It's also when we do get triggered, um, picture the traffic light and it's getting angry, focus on red. It's like, well, acknowledgement. Well, I'm angry, acknowledge. One has to acknowledge when we're mad. We don't have to agree with individuals. Then come down into the yellow, the inner child. Are we speaking from a wound? And what do we want this to be productive for? If we were to leave it on a shelf for a week and discuss it later, would it would it be um, relevant to us? And then green, come from a place of love and speak from that point. And sometimes other people aren't speaking to us so lovingly. It doesn't mean to say that we can't do such because it's loving ourselves by not entering into that element of conflict. But it depends on what the circumstances are. So by no means take it that I am saying to you, there's something wrong with you or you need to react to it differently. It's food for thought merely. We still also will need to create healthy boundaries this month. And I feel some of you could be pulled in two directions. You could be having things going on emotionally inside of you. It's really important to express these things. Uh, it's also very important to, you know, have a well-being day here and there. I am doing an emotion uh, part in this video and keep an eye on for the Capricorn placements as the moon transits. So number one, we will have Pluto there, which does mean your mind and the things spiritually you're letting go of, the tedious energies we deal with can be coming up. You can balance it with a tumbline and with um, amethyst, keep your fluid up, keep hydrated and breathing exercises. If everything gets tense, take a moment for yourself. Sit with it, tune out of it for a moment, give yourself permission to, and then come back to it when you're more anchored and grounded in. And, and anchored in and grounded means, wow, too much. If you can remove yourself from the direct environment, take your shoes off. Uh, but many people can be triggered this month, but it's, it's mind mastery. Uh, in the circumstances of the astrological weather, so to speak. So yes, there can be themes to do with family coming up at a big level, and we just need to be mindful, especially for your zodiac sign, don't allow it to impact your health. And how can we deal with those circumstances differently? And it doesn't have to be that they're toxic. It can be merely that there are circumstances that are playing out in your mind that are very separate that you're dealing with, um, and you're needing to get that balance. Now this part of the video incorporates both chakras and moon energy to help you get grounded and handle the transits. In the first few days, regardless of all the other heavy aspects, to deal with the circumstance there can be a lot of base chakra coming up for you as well as crown and that's because we have Saturn and we have um, Pluto going retrograde. So you're gonna have both first house and base chakra going on at the same time. So my suggestion would be, be grounded. Um, try to not get triggered. If you do get triggered, to really take your shoes off, anchor the energy in, um, keep your fluid up. You can use amethyst to directly protect you. And you know, being mindful of it means that if a trigger does come up or we're not dealing with circumstances, get a journal, Keep it in your handbag or you, if you've got a phone, male or female, write an email to yourself and go back to it at the end of the day and say, hey, I need to acknowledge this. But at least you put the energy into that. Yes, there can be circumstances in your career or other areas where there is fair agitation and it's important to eat a healthy food group this month. And we should point blank, zero. And it's not by any means I'm saying, um, you know, relating to weight. This is a balance of a battery inside our bodies that we're utilizing. So it can be something as simple as, um, you know, having, having something to help support it. So green tea, but you need to know what you can and can't have. And that's, that's purely your power. And directly, if you need to seek professional advice, always do such. This is from an astrological chakra point of view. And these dates are from the 1st through to the 4th. Very high crown chakra onto the 3rd and the 4th. But both of those chakras, if they can be balanced, they can support you. You can use jasmine tea, um, amethyst. And again, don't do anything unless you know you're able to do such. Seek 
professional advice. This is astrology. Let's get on to the next part of it. Now from the 5th to the 6th we're having the moon transit Pisces. You can use cat's eye to balance this area or again amethyst. Now it can, usually you'll have two elements going on. Both, we're going to have both Neptune in Pisces and we have Jupiter in Pisces. So you can link into those two areas but you will find that keeping your fluid up is really important and clearing the third eye. Trying to not emotionally tap out, especially because you do have Capricorn on the 12th house. Try and find healthy ways to deal with pressure um, in, and in order to cope with energy. So I do feel many of you are going to find um, different unique ways to deal with triggers. Um, you know, journaling, being in awareness of what these things are to shift it. But also when it does come to your hopes and dreams... Try to not second guess yourself. You do really have a great chart. You've got a lot of grand potential, guys. It is hard because you do have sudden retrograding in your first house. And so personally, you may not feel you resonate at the moment with individuals. So it's okay to need a little bit of time to have that integration and upgrade. Just be gentle. From the 7th to the 9th, we are having the moon transit Aries and we have Aries and Chiron. It's very Mars in nature. We also will have Mars and Cancer. Pay attention to your health. Make sure you keep balance. Try to not leave homework or errands to the last minute. It can become very intense. Uh, you know, over the last few months, I can say it has been tense. But really what it's teaching us is to not let, you know, sweep things under the carpet. Try and address them where you can. Moving through it, acknowledging the fact that you're building an empire, that you can make the betterment out of these situations. Um, but definitely resting where you need to. You can feel very excited and, and anticipating things. Um, we do have abilities to deal with their wounds this month. But you also will have a lot of base chakra activated. So as above, as below, anchor your energy in lower back pains, things to that degree. Heavy cycles can come up, especially moving into the new moon. If you feel you're inclined to mars somebody during the time we are having the moon transiting Aries, clear your throat chakra, breathe. Um, you can, <laughs> but just be in awareness on those dates. Uh, because we may be more open to verbal diarrhea if we're feeling triggered or agitated. Now the new moon is occurring on the 11th, but the day prior we do have the moon in the house of Taurus. It's a waning crescent. This in your body sense can connect with your neck, your vocal cords, throat, thyroid. Subjects relating to such can come up, but it's also throat chakra. And I would say higher heart chakra. And interesting, the fact is we moved away from that Aries polarity into the element of Taurus. Now, not that that's bizarre, but because we do have heart chakra here on the table, Aries and Chiron does directly link to heart chakra. So pretty much from the 7th through to the 12th, I would highly recommend balancing the heart chakra as well. Having green smoothies, green teas, um, practicing self-love, um, self-love speech, um, having understanding and compassion for self. But there can be, this can be great, you know, with it cleared and it operating a really high octane, you will become a huge manifester. So try to do such in the highest of octane. Now on the 13th and 14th, we're having the moon transiting Gemini. We do have a lot of heavy placements in the house of Gemini and we will have, we have the North Node also in Gemini. Our communication style and our health for your zodiac sign, Gem, be very careful. Be careful of who you trust as well, and I don't want you to be paranoid. Your intuition will always tell you. Don't overgive to those who haven't earned it, especially when it does come to your private element of life. Create that healthy boundary. When it comes to your work, your environment, your routine, practice awareness of your environment. I would say with such, also be careful driving. But this can be throat chakra and we can be more accident prone. So what I was going to mention to you in your chakra report was on the first mm, four or five days, be careful of head injuries. Because you have the 12th house and it is in various places, driving and, you know, your head accident prone energy and I'm not predicting anything it's crown chakra so just be mindful of your surroundings 
because we have the North Node in Gemini and we're moving towards that Mercury retrograde, we can be a little bit more in a hurry and prone to accidents, which is perfectly normal. Now between the 15th and the 17th, we have the moon transiting cancer. Look after your health, cycles may be heavy. Um, this can be the inner child, the yellow chakra. It also can be very much third eye um, energy coming through with the moon. So you can balance both polarities um, and be mindful of the people around you. Also, the way you're going to directly relate to it, if you need any checkups done this month, it would be a perfect time at the beginning of the month. Get those things done, follow up on the paperwork, practice that self-care um, and have food groups that support uh, your vibration. Now, then we're moving towards the 18th and the 19th, where I'll end it at that point till next week. Um, the following one, I should say. And for the love updates that I'm going to be doing, we are going to be having the moon transiting Leo. Now, this can be a very strong point for you. Um, you can use these moon placements to manifest things. You can use them um, where I've mentioned to get the best out of it. When it transits the house of Leo, subjects relating to love can come up because it's falling in your seventh house. So... Um, with your emotions, I would say coming from a place of heart, but try not to romanticize. But it can be where you have emotions relating to a loved one that you miss. It also can be love can come in at this time. Um, the person's missing you, you're missing them. But very separately, there is heart chakra there. Pay attention to your connections, um, especially because we have Mars in Cancer. You may be more cautious about who you're investing in. You know, this can be your work and your love life and your friendship groups. But, you know, having the strength and the courage that you guys can have a really great year with all the hard effort you're putting in, you're really going to reap rewards moving forward. A lot of what we're doing in 2021 is setting us up for the next 20 years. So although it can seem tedious and like things aren't ever going to change, Every little step you guys take really is taking you to that higher ground. So please have faith in yourselves. Now we are moving on to the next aspect of the report, which is the dates. I have a little mini intro to it. It does tell you important dates and you must know. So at the end of it, I do give a portion that does explain to you how to work with certain trigger dates and what the great ones are, what the hard ones are. And then I do have the ending of the video which tells you how to use the website should you need to look at it. Take care, let's get on to the next part. Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, this is your bi-monthly energy update astrologically. Now, I am going to mention the tedious energies of where the placements are. Okay, we do have the new moon occurring on the 11th in the house of Taurus. The sun also currently is in Taurus and it will enter Gemini on the 20th. Mercury is in the house of Taurus and it will be entering the house of Gemini on the 9th and going into shadow retrograde by mid-month. Mars also is in the house of Cancer until June the 11th. So bear that in mind when it comes to your emotions. We're also going to be having Venus in Taurus up until the 9th where it will transit into the house of Gemini. That can be where we are going to be super busy, but we will need this flexibility to be playful and to be ourselves and not be controlling. We're also towards mid-month 26 going to be having the total lunar eclipse in the house of Sagittarius. Now, the astrology big boss states is the place where you need to be mindful of retrogrades and major transits. Jupiter will be entering the house of Pisces on the 13th of May, 2021, and it can give you things of what's going to happen in 2022. So it's a very important time to be having a look at those areas. Now we will start feeling Saturn going into shadow by about the 15th, but you can potentially feel it earlier. It is occurring on the 23rd of May and it will go direct of the 1st. Pluto is also in retrograde in the house of Capricorn until the 6th of October. We also have last but not least Mercury in Gemini going into shadow by mid-month in the house of Gemini. So a lot of action, a lot of movement, some frustration, pre-warned, forearmed. 
Now for your astrology best boss dates, we do have the 9th. Allow love to be fluid and be playful on the 11th. Deep clearing of emotions through actions and relations and relationships on the 13th. Make your dreams come true with beautiful aspects to Neptune. On the 1st to the 15th, get your resumes out and hold on to your hats as Mercury goes into shadow retrograde. Now these are the astrology hard boss states but they're also very quickly some things to be very mindful of during this month and beyond. With Mars and Cancer we can be guided to be quite emotional and if we're suppressing things we can be more upset and aggressive in nature. We also with Mercury going retrograde can have some confusion and need to slow down especially when traveling cross all the T's, dot all the I's and breathe. Now the 2nd of May, caution with speech and travel but be on the ball. On May the 11th, emotions and triggers can get the best of us so try to avoid control. With Pluto and Capricorn retrograde until the 6th, we can feel a little bit nervous when it does come to endings and be coming to term with those things. Use it as a quality system. On the 14th, plan ahead, double check and read all your documents, keep your receipts as Mercury in the house of Gemini goes into shadow retrograde. Now come and join us for the romance reads. I do them at a psychic intuitive level. We're also live every Friday. Now quickly into the website, a quick view into it. Here's the website. You can find the link directly below. It's really easy to navigate. If you have any issues, there is a video that does give you updates how to use it, but you can also inbox me. Separately, we have the page that takes you to the bookings. It's got all the um, direct information, all the tools that you need, and the booking page as such. We do have different ones that we have, which is it's the um, Skype videos, we have pre-recorded videos, and we have emergency bookings. So I hope that helped. Do stay tuned if you love this content and you feel this is your tribe. Please click the bell and subscribe. We have live updates every Friday. And yes, we do have Super Chat as well as the Member Zone. See you next week.